What's good, YouTube? Philanthropy's back for another video, man. Um, I was just watching on ESPN, um, and uh, everyone's speaking right now about uh, Caitlin Clark being left off of the USC, you know, and um, right here, some of the ladies um, who played in the WNBA and who covered the game and speak on it, because I'm not an expert in it. You know, I'm just going based off of my eye test and what I've been, been have seen since I started watching. But I know hoops, of course. Um, but these ladies who covered it, weigh in on it. Um, one of them is uh, Gumake, who you probably have uh, seen, you know, on um, First Take uh, with Stephen A. Smith a number of times. And also on uh, Basketball uh, Live, I believe it's called, you know, with Malika Andrews and Perkins and... And, and and the crew. Um, also, another young lady whose name escapes me, but um, I'm sure they'll mention it, and they discuss it, man. And one of the major themes that they're discussing and mentioning is the physicality of USA ba of, of basketball around the world. Again, physicality, and this is a thing. A lot of you people, man, you think you know basketball, and you want to get up here and say, like, real basketball, you know, is a, is not a physical sport. Fat basket, the truth is, basketball has always been a physical sport since inception. It's just the recent now uh, idea of uh, people who believe that somehow scoring a whole bunch of points makes a game better. And I'm going to do a video on this because that's nonsense, just scoring more points. The most popular sport in the world of all sports is soccer. That's the most popular sport worldwide. And soccer, points are hard to come by. You might have a game that's three points, three to two, and people go crazy over this game. So it is not true that more points equals better entertainment, according to most people around the world. But uh, let's get to this video, man, and I'm going to chime in. Mercy to bed. How about we just ratchet up another one? Hello. Because the U.S. Olympic roster was leaked today. And here are the names that are unofficially, officially yeah. <laughs> making uh, said roster. And we got to give a big shout out to five-time gold medalist, now six-time Diana Taurasi, who turns 42 on Tuesday. And she'll be joined by her Mercury teammate, Brittany Griner. You take a look at this list, some newcomers as well, first-time Olympians, Alyssa Thomas, who at 32 years old becomes the oldest women's basketball player for Team USA wow. to make her first roster. Here we There's go, Sabrina AC. And of course, uh, your star of last night, Kalia Copper as well. Notably, the name that is not on that list is Caitlin Clark. Your thoughts? Yeah, I think obviously people are going to be fired up about Caitlin Clark not being on the team, especially Caitlin Clark fans that love Caitlin's game. And Caitlin is having a phenomenal season. But what I want people to think about is one, FIBA rules, like people that are just getting to the WNBA and seeing how physical this game is, FIBA and in international basketball is 10 times more physical. I have a lot of friends who are guards that go overseas. Y'all hear that? FIBA. That means Europe. All, all, all Russia, China, different places like that. Basketball, even the women's game, is physical. And they said 10 times more physical than what's going on in the W. And y'all complaining about the W. 10 times more physical. And I heard some of y'all on some of your little sites, you're saying the majority wants a game that's not physical. Listen to me. You are not the majority. Just because y'all like to watch Logo 3s and Circus Basketball and y'all need to just go watch the Harlem Globetrotters, that does not mean that you're more, you're the majority because you're not, okay? And I understand American arrogance because I carry some of that myself. I've been to other places of the world. But the reality is you're not the majority. Basketball is a physical sport to play and guards struggle with that initial physicality of overseas basketball so that is an elite level of physicality and two most of the women that made this team competed in belgium they're familiar with each other they played in camp together and that familiarity especially because the competition internationally has gone up it's skyrocketed the familiarity with the team has to be something that the committee took into consideration when putting this team together so i love it when you speak because i love to write notes when you talk about physicality i know it's maybe a nice ostrich say she ain't better than none of the women on the, on the team. That's simple. That's the way I would put it. But, you know, they being nice. 
exactly what that means. I grew up in the pipeline of USA basketball, and you really want to make your bread and butter building equity so that you are selected. But when you speak of physicality, I played in Italy, I played in China, my sister played in China in multiple years in Russia. It is actually 10 times more physical, and that's been the topic of the physicality of the W. Wait until you see the overseas ball. And speaking of the international competition, when I look at this entire roster, to me, they want experience. Yeah. They truly want experience. People that have played overseas, people that have built up that equity playing in the WNBA, people of names that they have known. You can take a look right here because that's what it shows me. Now, the biggest point here, and this is what I want to bring home. Team USA has won seven gold medals straight because of their motto, team before me. They don't care who really gets the credit as long as they leave with a gold medal. Yeah. What has been the discourse? Now, that's the way you got to be. That's the way you got to be in international ball like that. I remember even the dream team. You know, we know Michael Jordan is the greatest scorer probably of all time. He's the greatest scorer I've ever seen since I've been watching basketball. But the player who led that uh, that team in scoring was Charles Barkley. Jordan might have averaged about 11 because they were spreading the ball this season besides the play on the floor it's yeah. been who do we attribute who do we give credit to for the growth of the women's game and the WNBA and the moment that we're in right now I believe Team USA looks at the roster and they have experience but they also don't want the distraction that comes now me as a fan of Caitlin Clark yeah I agree I wouldn't want that damn distraction man something wrong with our fans man not all not everybody like I said you Iowa people who really watch Iowa I respect that. But, yo, all these weirdos, man, these KKK channels and all that kind of stuff, man, that's, that's purely biased, you know what I mean, and trying to put their politics all in it. I don't nobody need all that. They just want a team that's going to go over there and handle business. And for real, for real, all y'all would do is complain about them freezing Caitlin now. Is she the rookie? If she was on the team, if you look at that 1992 team, you know what they did? They put Christian Leitner on there. Christian Leitner is arguably a better uh, college player than Caitlin Clark was. Christian Leitner actually won titles. He won titles with Duke. Caitlin Clark didn't win no titles. She scored a bunch of points. If she's on that team, she's not going to start. And if she put, if she's in there, they're not going to just be passing her the ball, making her the center of what's going on. So she don't fit right now. Next four years, I guarantee you, she'd be on that team probably. I would have loved to see her on this international stage, but I understand that Team USA. I don't believe that. Goon K just played. She a politician. I don't believe she she felt that way. <laughs> she's saying the right thing though, because all uh, she knows y'all gonna say she's a hater because there's something wrong with y'all. You can't have an honest opinion about Caitlin Clark being a young player up and coming, but young right now, not better than these ladies right now, without being called a haters because y'all stands. Y'all not real fans of basketball. Y'all just stands. It constructs their roster, not necessarily on fandom, but completing the mission. And I think that's what we see right now. Also, just think about this one. It's really difficult for a player coming right out of college to make the Olympic team because you miss camps, like I said earlier. But let's think about Brianna Stewart, right? She made the Olympic team mm -hmm. when she was a rookie. Who was the coach of that team? Gino Ariema. I'm not saying that's why she made the team, but there's a familiarity there that's going to help her be successful. There were also four other Connecticut Huskies on that team to help Stewie in her first Olympics. That's not the situation for Caitlin. Yeah. Cheryl Reeve, who's the head coach, she's not familiar with Caitlin Clark, and the team's not familiar with Caitlin But look, Clark. when you've been the preeminent dominant force in international basketball for seven Olympic cycles straight, you'll realize that you can play loose and fast with who you want on the team. I know this personally, seeing my sister and Candace Parker being left off the squad. If you look at the point guards, that's I think that recent history now, they're trying to right some wrongs and build with experience, but overall, the point guards, there's going to be question marks about Chelsea Gray, who has yeah. yet to step floor a step on the floor for the Las Vegas Aces and question marks even on Diana at 41. So yes, they're trying to right some wrongs, but also you have to look at what those circumstances of the past now open you up for. Diana does lead the league in three-point percentage, and I would just say this to add to the discourse that's inevitably going to happen all week long. Who would you take off? Yeah, Start there. Who on that list also, would you take off? Nobody. And if you did take them off, the next person you're going to put on is somebody like Arike or somebody like that or, or Skylar Diggins. You're not putting uh, Caitlin Clark over either one of them. Caitlin is going to have plenty more opportunities. She's she killing it right she's now. We will see her. She is playing so well. Rookie she's of the putting month. Up, rookie of the month. She's putting up historical numbers. Caitlin's having a phenomenal. Look at them being nice. ESPN say, hey, look. <laughs> Speak your truth. 
But don't turn away Caitlin Clark fans. There's a whole lot of them. Don't turn them away. You know what I mean? That's what ESPN done told them. They, they told them the assignment. See, me, I don't give a damn. I'm going to tell the truth. Caitlin ball out. I'm like, yo, she did her thing. But I'm going to tell you about them turnovers, too. I'm not going to tell you she's playing fantastic. They almost lost that damn game, and it ain't just because of sides. She turned the goddamn ball over. That's what happens. You know what I mean? Um, and you played the Mystics. Like, let's not act crazy, right? Here. You played the Mystics. The Mystics are horrible. We know that. Mystics missing free throws. Mystics would kill one the game. They made it free throws. This is the reality. See, I don't care. Like, hey, my channel ain't, I don't need all, I don't care. I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to speak hoops. And I'm going to find people that appreciate the truth. Those are the people that gravitate to the channel. Welcome. People that want to be capped up and all that, I don't need you near me. I don't deal with people that need to be capped in my real life. So I, I couldn't care less. But these ladies, I understand. That's the assignment. <laughs> no season, and yep. this is going to be motivation for her moving forward. And how satisfying for Caitlin that she's getting everybody's best defense and she's... All right, man, so... Them ladies weighed in on it, man. Like, and um, tell me what you think, people. Peace out.